He's, this is a box of flies that, if you're a competition angler, especially in the Lochs and the Lakes uh, here in the UK and Ireland, uh, this is a good set of flies to have. And uh, like the cormorants, this is the Irish cormorants I call it. There's uh, the snatchers, crunchers, and then dullbacks. Very popular flies in the lochs. And, and fish extremely well. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie one. Uh, basically it gives the impression of both midge and uh, caddis pupa. And this is, this is the fly here. Now, the hook I'm using, this is a, a basically a full and mill, it's called a competition heavyweight. Uh, it's a size 10. Uh, 10 and 12 are two main sizes, but even smaller. Uh, fly will still work. The two main sizes would be a size 10 uh, and a size 12. The thread I'm going to be using uh, it's the black NATO uni thread. Now they have waxed the thread. Start the thread at the eye. I'm going to wind down until I'm in line with the point of the hook and remove the waist. So it's there, and then remove the waist. So basically, when I'm in line with the point of the hook, meaning when I let the bobbin go, it should be in line with the point. Now, the tail, I'm just going to use a cock hackle. This is a it's basically a furnace, uh, it's a nice, just a cheap Indian neck, and I'm using up the large feathers. And I like using it on this fly. Now, what I'm going to do is bring the fibres 90 degrees from the stem and then once that lines up the tips of the fibres, I can tear them away. Tail length, you're looking around about the shank, tying that on the top. A couple of turns just to hold but winding down. And then I'll just first I'm going to check the length. Yeah, that'll do. You could go a tad longer but I'm quite happy with that. Trim this the length of the body which is there. So you're looking at that, it's quite a short body in this style. This allows you to hold the hook at the back if you can catch release. You can obviously debarb when you don't catch release. And then without destroying the fly you can use the bend. You can get your pliers in there or you can use your fingers. So basically that's like two thirds of the shank, uh, the body in this case. Now rib, just using a small gold wire. And again, the next turn is again heading down, just a turn to hold it. Got pheasant tail fibre, this is just a cock pheasant tail, it's a natural brown. Just bring out a few, say, half dozen fibres, 90 degrees. And the stem and the feather, we can tear that away once they've lined up. I usually offer them in with a single turn and then pull it in. Now that turn is starting to head back up now. So we've got a turn there just to pull in the fibres and then we can tighten up and line the thread up. Stop it two thirds of the way up. Now with the weakest fibre I'm winding the opposite way, align my thread and my rib. Just wind up. Take your time. And then, because we're doing that, we have to lock in the, the turn to hold it, meaning when we come over the pheasant tail fibre, we do a turn, and then we do a turn on the hook, and that locks that turn in. We do the same again and again, and then we can trim away. If you don't do that, it'll unwind, because you're winding against yourself. Now, obviously winding this way, we bring the wire up the same way we wind the thread. Again, this catches in pheasant tail fibre, far better. And you can see it as well. Now you're looking around about five turns, just follow it up with the thread at the last turn, put a 90 degree bend in, make sure it's secure, and then we can bend and break it away. And that's as simple as that. Now the thorax, normally in a, a cruncher, will be peacock kettle, but I'm going to be using this here. This is the chocolate brown uh, diamond bright. Now it's a, it's a basically like a bronze peacock colour. Uh, I like it, it's a great. You can blend it if you want as well. You can blend it into some other dubbin to add a wee bit of colour, but I'm using it raw just as it comes. Very easy to dub. Slightly dub it onto your thread. And then we will up with thorax. Should be a bit tighter than that. 
Mason. Tight. Make sure you have got plenty of room. Now before you come to the front here, I'm just going to stroke back these fibres. You can fix the ones away that's too long. Just put it back in the pile of the dubbing because we can still use that. We quite look, see how it's looking. Now we're forming like a taper in the fly, so it, it's tapering up. Then for the hackle, I'm just going to use like the tail fibres, uh, I use the cotton, I use the hen in the firmness colour. So I'll just take one of these, and these are just cheap Indian necks. Tie it in by the tip because I want the darker part. And most of them when you tie in a hen hackle you'll be doing this anyway, so what I'm going to do is just reveal the tip of the hackle, trim away what we don't need, wax on with thread, secure it in, do it returns. Uh, I could use my hackle plaster, so you can see what I'm doing. Just lightly just stroke back the fibres. Depending on how good the hackle is now. Because they're just cheap hackles, there's times you may have to put an extra turn or so in. Just 90 degree bend into the stem and you're happy with the number of turns. This will lock it in. The 90 degree bend stops it pulling back. Trim that away. Stroke back any fibres going forward. Put two or three turns of hackle. And then that will hold these fibres back. Now for the wing buds, we're going to be using uh, jungle cock. This is a split jungle cock uh, feather. As you can see, there's a you can see that there, but there is a split right down the centre. Well, just about. It's, it's close enough. And we can use this to form the wing buds. Now you don't have to use this because the fly will still work without it. So just removing the fluff at the back. Now you'll see like a black area there. That's like a when the jungle cock eye. That's the softest part and the best grip. And that's that when you tie in jungle cock, that's the area I like to tie on, if I can anyway. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split, force them apart, and down either side with the hackle. Just check that this side, your side's dropped a wee bit so I can basically come back with a turn or two. Just manipulate the fibre to sit where you want. Uh, that's a bit better, it's in line. And check both sides. That looks okay, happy with that. And then what I like to do is security is just to fold this back and then trim away. That's it, tuck back, there's the waist. Just come in. Just bring it up. Away. And a wee touch of wax there, yeah, which shows plenty of grip. Now I'm going to go back to the, the dubbing again, just a tiny bit of dubbing. So representing the big bubbles that build up at the head of the caddis. Tie it in front. Just think of the taper. Especially with caddis, there's a they're quite a nice shape, and that's the shape you're looking for. If you're looking at it more as a midge pattern, it's usually a wee touch finer dressed in this. Stroke it, stroke it back with your fingers. Just draw back the fibre. See how it's looking. And these long ones, we can break away. Happy with the shape. And then it's quite simple. Just a wee bit of varnish on your thread. Couple of turns, and what finish? Two, three, four. You may catch an odd fibre because you've got the dubbing at the head, but it's okay. And there we are, and that is basically a, a peasant tail cruncher. Good pattern. As I say, it will work for midge pattern as much as it works for caddis. Uh, this time of year, this is a good colour combination. Now, there we are, that's it finished.
the sizes would be, this is a 10 as I say, it's you tied short, it's exactly the same you tie a 12, and uh, you can change the colours to suit, a uh, good colour would be a red body, a red body works, um, obviously orange, olives, they all do, you can keep the fly practically the same, and, uh, or you can change the colour of the hackle as well. It's just a good style, so if you think your cad is pupa, you can work this to suit the flies to give that impression. So that's why it works so well. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoy the videos, uh, please subscribe. It does help. And uh, thank you for watching.